Hello my most amazing artists. Today we are going to continue our artist study on Keith Haring by creating figures in Keith Haring's iconic style using the bold black outlines, shape, movement line, and color. Even though this guy doesn't have a lot of color, you can always add more color to yours. Then we're going to take those figures and we're going to make them pop out against a very Keith Haring background. For this project, you're going to need paper, scissors, glue, and markers or something to color with. Now before we get started, you might want to go back and watch the video of the book I read about Keith Haring to refresh your memory, but I'm also going to show you a couple of images of Keith Haring's iconic artwork to spark some of your ideas. Okay, I'm going to start by drawing the figure. You might want to do a couple practices of this before you do your final, but I'm just going to jump right into it. So the figure in my artwork is smaller, so we need a little bit of a smaller piece of paper. So I'm taking my computer paper here, and I'm going to fold it in half so that I have a little bit of a smaller piece of paper to work with. Now I'm going to start with a pencil here and I'm going to be drawing a figure. Now you have to remember that Keith Haring loved to draw figures in weird body position. He was really inspired by break dancers and how they could twist their bodies while they were dancing into all these crazy positions. So one of the things I'm going to start with is super simple, the head. I'm going to draw a really small head right now because I'm going to be drawing a bigger head around it. Just like in our positivity posters, we are going to be making the skeleton right now, and then we're going to draw the body around the skeleton. So I'm going to start out with a basic stick person shape. He's got a small head and a really long body. And now I have to decide how I want him to be moving. One great thing I like to do is I like to pull a brother or sister or a mom, dad, somebody to do a body position, have them pose for you, and try to draw that pose in a stick figure. So I think I'm going to do like a person that's going to be doing this a kick in the air. I'm going to draw a leg coming out, like bent like this. Maybe he is a ninja. He's going to have an arm out. He is showing off his ninja skills. Just like I think I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Hi, yeah. All right, so this is my, my stick figure. I drew this really lightly because I am gonna go back and erase it, but then I'm gonna draw the body around it just like we did for our fonts. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go around the body. I'm trying to keep it as the same as possible, close to being the same thickness all the way around. So I've got my, my body around my key pairing figure. He is doing a lot of motion right now. And then I'm gonna make another thinner line that follows that line. So I'm gonna make it kind of close to the body. I'm gonna trace around. If I can't get into these little places, it's okay. I'm not even gonna go inside of here. Maybe just a little triangle. What we're doing right now is we're creating a line that's going to be our big, thick, black outline that Keith Haring has around all of his drawings. And so we're just going to follow it around. There. Just like that. Now I'm going to take a black marker. If you don't have a black marker, you can use black crayon, you can use a pencil and just go darker. And I'm going to fill in that little space between the body and that line I just drew. This is going to give me that thick, black outline that Keith Haring is so well known for in his drawings. Now that I have that thick black line around my figure, I can go back with my eraser and I can erase my skeleton because I don't need him anymore. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to be adding in a couple of details inside the body. Now you could just color in the body one color if you wanted to or you can start adding in lines and leave him empty. 
with the, with the color. I think actually I might add a little bit of color because that sounds kind of fun. I think I'm going to go with a green and I'm going to fill them in. One thing Keith Haring did is he always kind of left it one color on the inside. He didn't really change the colors inside of his figures too much. They always were one color. But you could also use yours white, leave yours white like I did if you'd like that look better. So let's try something different on this one. Right. Now that he's colored in, I'm going to add some kind of fun action lines. You can use any of your lines that you know, zigzag, curly, shapes are good too. I like to put these circles at the knees because I kind of think they look like kneecaps. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm going to put this to the side and now we're going to work on that really cool Keith Haring style background. Now he is really known for having some busy artwork so I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to start just drawing with a black marker my designs and I'm just going to draw some random stuff on here between lines and different objects and shapes. You can use the pencil first if you want to up to you but remember this is just for your background so you don't have to think too hard about it remember that Keith Haring loved these little lines around the edges these little tiny short lines were what showed motion and movement in his artwork so that's how you could tell if the figures were dancing or moving around so I'm gonna work on this for a little bit and then I will come back All right, so now we're gonna to start to do some construction together. So I'm gonna take a piece of construction paper that I have and I wanna make that as like a backing for my background. Now, if you don't have construction paper, you don't have to do this step at all. You could just do the step that I'm gonna show you after this, but I think this is gonna add a little bit of interest. So I've got some green construction paper, thought it would look nice with my green guy. And I'm going to put it on top of here, but you can see that my white paper is the same size as my construction paper. So I'm gonna trim a little bit off of the edges just to make it a little bit smaller so it has a green border on it. So I'm gonna pick part of my picture that I don't like as much as the rest of it. I'm just gonna trim off the side. You can use a ruler for this to make sure that it's more even than mine is. Mine's a little bit crooked, but that's okay. And I'll cut a little bit off the top. So I'm gonna pick one side and one of the top or bottom edges. And then I should have like a little bit of a border. And if I want more of a border, I can cut this even a little bit smaller, which I think I might do. I would like a little more of a border. Sorry to my little dog, I'm gonna cut his bottom off. So now I've got a little bit more of an edge around this. Okay, so I'm gonna take my glue stick, I'm gonna flip this paper over, and I'm just gonna do glue around the edges. I don't need to fill the whole backside up with glue, that's just wasting your glue stick. One line around the edge is just enough. Flip it over, and kind of line it up with the edges. I'm trying to make sure it has an even border around it. Now if you want to, you can go back in and you can color some of these things on your background. You don't have to if you want to have like a colorful person popping off of the black and white background for some good contrast, but you could experiment and see what it looks like to color in a few things. It's really up to you and how you want your artwork to look. So maybe I'm going to try it out since I did only a black and white one on my last one. Let's try doing a little more color on this. I did add a little bit of color. I tried to stick with like limited color, so I only did yellow and pink, but you can do this however you want. Like I said, you can leave it black and white. Now it's time to make our 3D person pop off our background. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to be cutting just around the body. I'm going to leave a little bit of a white space around it, just so he pops off a little bit more. 
So as I'm cutting, remember I folded this piece of paper in half. So I'm only going to cut on the part side that has my person on it. And you remember, you can let the scissors stay in the same direction and let that helper hand do all the work turning the paper for you. If the space is too small for you to fit inside, don't worry about it. You can just go around it. I'm not going to be too worried about it being absolutely perfect, but I do want to leave that little white border around my big black bold outline so that it kind of pops even a little bit more. All right, here is my dancing karate green guy, and now I need to make him pop out. So we got to do a little bit of paper folding to create almost like a pop out illusion. So I'm going to take this paper, I'm cutting off this crazy edge here. So I have one piece of paper, and I, this is the scrap paper on the other side that I folded in half when I drew my person. I'm going to fold this in half. So that it's even smaller and I'm gonna cut a couple strips of paper so I'm gonna cut one like this one two and you can cut a couple of these you can cut a whole bunch of them so they're really sturdy you could just cut a few but I wanted a couple cut a couple they're already folded in half and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to lift up the inside a little bit and put a little bit of glue in there with my glue stick and fold it so that these stay together. So I open them up, a little bit of glue, press down so they stay together. Do that on all the strips that you cut. I have five strips. Um, on the other one I only used four, so it's really up to you depending on how big your person is, how many strips you'll need to hold them up. So I just glued them together so that they're one piece and they're not going to come apart. And then I'm going to do a accordion fold on these. So I'm going to be folding them one way, back the other. Or if you look at it from this way, it's going to the right, to the left, to the right. So that I can get kind of a zigzaggy accordion shape. So I'm going to do that to all of my right left, right, left. Okay, so I have all of my little accordions folded. So now I'm going to apply them to my little figure guy here. So I'm gonna move him over, move this over, I'm gonna flip him around. And so I've gotta put glue on one of the feet of the um, accordion thing. So you can either put it right onto one of the ends, like this, and then stick it down. Or you can just kind of find some spots that you think would be good. Maybe one right here. Put glue on the back of the person and then stick one of the feet down on top. Give them a good massage. So now they're all kind of glued on and then on the top part of the foot, you're going to put a little more glue. You got to work kind of quickly with this so that it does not get dried out and do that to all of them. And then I'm going to place them onto my background. Flip them over. I want to make sure that all those little feet go down on there. So you might have to look underneath a little bit tilt your head to make sure that they're all kind of placed. Got one right here. And kind of press them down a little bit and then lift them up. And there he is. He is popping off of my paper. You can kind of see right there. That's what it's going to look like after it's all done. Not too shabby, huh? a pop-out action dancing Keith Haring illustration. And that's how you create a Keith Haring pop-out illustration. You just learned how to draw the Keith Haring figure and add some really fun illustrations to the background and to make them pop out for a little more interest. Now remember you can leave it uh, black and white or you can color it. It's really up to you. So have fun creating. Goodbye my most amazing artist.